Welcome to another episode with the GS. Today, as I mentioned in the last episode, I'm gonna be looking at the USB side of things, but I'm gonna also have a look at the wiring on the bike because there's a bit of an issue where the bike is losing power from the battery enough that the bike doesn't wanna start. So the plan now is just to start getting into things and then put a little preventive measure on at the end so that I can just quick connect a trickle charger and keep the battery maintained when I'm not using it. Now I've been looking forward to getting under the tank to check the wires and connectors ever since the bike stalled for no reason. This is to check the condition of the wiring and the connectors hidden away to make sure there's no signs of wear and tear or damage. That's all I'm doing is pulling apart each connector to check the pins and then inspect the insulation of the wires attached. I then repeat the process on the remaining connectors and check any further wires that don't have any wiring harness loom tape on them. So the original wiring doesn't look too bad in all fairness. There's a few crap wires here and there, but nothing that I'm really too concerned about at the minute, but it's definitely something I'll think of in the future. For now though, I'm gonna look at this newly added wiring. This goes to the USB port and there is an issue with that and I'll show you that now. If I park my bike up for a long time, I normally tend to lock the handlebars in one position, turn the key off, and then all the power's off and the handlebars are locked. But if the bike is left in here or outside, bear in mind this isn't my place, the key is turned one more so that the handlebars are loose so that it can be maneuvered about if needs be, but the key is with me so that the bike can't be ridden. The only problem with that is this. With the handlebars locked and the key removed, there doesn't seem to be any issue with the USB port. There's no lights, no power to the USB ports there. With the key in, turned one way and removed. That's enough to loosen the handlebars. But as you can see, there's a light on on the USB chargers and that remains on for weeks at a time because that allows the bike to be moved around. So as you can imagine, that's a little bit frustrating because that's what's been draining the battery. So my goal now is just pull this apart. I'm gonna fit a brand new one that will actually show me the voltage of the bike as well. Now to get the ball rolling, I've first got to remove the old USB charger. So I've got to cut off all the cable ties and then start cutting away at the miles of insulation tape holding the black and red wires together so that I can see what they connected to. Have a look at this then. What they've done here is they've stripped from there to there, made a little bit of a splice in between and then fed this wire through and then they've wrapped it around and then used the insulation tape to hide it. Now that the connections are exposed, I have to unravel the USB wires and detach them from the loom. And a word of warning, this is not the place to wire your USB charger if you're looking for a switch live, as I find out later on in this video. So I'm gonna do a bit of a out with the old and in with the new. I've got, I'm gonna get shot of this one and I've got a new one here. This one's got USB-C and a normal USB connector, but it's also got a little button on the side there that when I knock it on, it will show me the voltage in the bike. So if I have any issues in the future, that will tell me. To allow me to fit the new USB charger to the bike, I've got to first remove the plastic mount off the old charger. I've then got to make a slight modification as the new one won't fit because it's a little bit fatter than the original. And here we have it, a nice snug fit. And with the mount sorted, I make a cut in the purple and gray wires. I clean up the insulation and crimp the new piggyback spade connectors to those cut wires. I've then got to connect the two spade connectors together, ready for the new wiring. And with that done, I crimp two new connectors to the wiring of the new USB charger. Do a test check to make sure there's power going to the charger itself before fitting the new connectors to the piggyback wires and hopefully that should be good to go. From there, I just need to fit the new mount and everything is good, ready to feed the wires up to the charger and finishing off with some conduits over the black and red wires just to keep them together and to stop any chafing in the future. So that's the new USB charger and voltmeter fitted to the bike. Now, as you can see with this, you can turn the power on. It'll bring up everything on the screen there and it'll also start charging your phone. But if you don't want it to do that, you can obviously knock it off. Now, when the ignition is turned on, this is just gonna automatically come on anyway and then stay on so it will tell me how the battery's looking and everything else. But not only that, with the USB charger out, you can still see what's going on there. So it's not gonna be an annoying little power drain when I take the key out. I can knock it off as and when I want to. I've also added this trickle charger connected as well so that I can just connect everything up without messing about underneath the battery anymore. So that is all good as well. And that should prevent any issues 
trying to start the bike in future, meaning I can just come home, get out on the bike, make a video, put it back away and live happily ever after. Now it's been a week since I filmed that last segment and that's because I didn't want to post the video without finishing the job. So this is what I've been up to today. I've now fitted new conduit, which I bought. It was in that bag, it's now <laughs> all over the floor. Uh, but yeah, fitted conduit all around this new charger, which is down there. That's the new Sealy charger. It's a trickle charger, cheap as chips. Job done, that looks much better. I just need to figure out how I'm gonna feed it. If I'm gonna feed it, I could just tuck it underneath there and forget about it and then pull it out when I need it. But that's, that's to be dealt with in a bit. The bit I'm not happy with, which I'm hoping some of you may be able to give me some suggestions in the comments, is these parts here. I've done some piggyback like spade connectors on there and they do look all right, but they're big and bulky and they look crap with this insulation tape on there. So yeah, I'm not pleased with that job in all fairness. I think I need to get the soldering iron out and do this a better way than what it was. But other than that, it'll do the job for now. It's protected, it's doing the right thing. Um, all the cables are now covered in conduit as well. So they look a lot better. They fed a lot better than they were originally as well because all this was bunching up, pushing this off, which was causing a nightmare when I was fitting the tank because that C clip there was just sort of getting stuck on the wiring as it was pushing out and getting trapped in between there. So yeah, that's another job done less cable ties but doing a better job than they were originally so yeah it does look a bit better but that is so much a nice hole and i want to do it better than what it is there so the bike is back together then and as much as i'd like to say everything is all good and everything's working well it's really not and the reason for that is when you put the bike into the sort of locked handlebars position all is good there's no power but you turn it one click and that is in r on this little barrel and that is putting power to the usb charger which i knew anyway and then when you turn it on it knocks the power off now again i knew that so i thought well, why would somebody wire up the usb charger that way it doesn't make sense to have it charge when the bike is off but then not charge when the bike is on and for some reason i pressed the starter button and i saw light to the usb charger so i thought all ah, right okay when the engine is turning over like when the bike is running the usb charger must run but i didn't have any like i didn't have the tank on to test it so i just went with it thinking well that makes sense and the guy must have done that must have found out that when you turn the bike over and everything starts it puts power to the usb charger <laughs> but it didn't so i'm now thinking well maybe he knew that and he just went oh, well whatever i'm not doing that again not messing about with that and then just left it not knowing that it's going to drain the battery if you leave the you know the battery in that one click position in the r position because the power stays on unless you've got a switch on the usb charger but yeah for me now because i i knew it i wanted to source my own power but i didn't i just followed that guy's wiring because i thought it start it, it would work when the bike is started so yeah i'm a bit bit annoyed now i'm a bit annoyed that i didn't go down my own route and like find my own tap into the, <laughs> into the power so that is a really annoying and frustrating end to this episode for me don't do what i did there's a saying that a cheap fix for me is an expensive fix for somebody else down the line and it seems that's the way now and that's why i've been doing everything by the book for this bike because I want to do things properly so that if I ever sell this bike or give it to somebody, it's all working and safe. But for now, the tank is going to come back off, which is good because I put those new quick release connectors on it. But I've got to get into getting another tap for this. So I don't know what to do. Could be headlights or something like that, or I don't know. I'm going to look into it. But that's going to bring this episode to an end. Thanks very much for watching. I'll bring you another episode soon. Links in the description. Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes.